John John Briones, um, the assassination of Johnny Versace uh, in episode eight introduces this this really terrifying character, which is the character you play of Modesto Cunanan, uh, Andrew Cunanan's father. First of all, just how did you get involved with this project? How did this project come to you? Uh, <laughs> very interesting. It, it's it's. Uh, I found out that Darren Chris a long time ago. Uh, the beginning of, of last year, uh, that Darren was was trying to get in touch with me. And then fast forward to uh, the Tonys, and I was on my way to the bathroom, and he said, John, John, I said, Darren, and I don't know him, we've never met. And he said, I need to talk to you. Finally, we, we got to talk, and he said, I need you to watch out for a, uh, a project. It's uh, uh, um, the, the Versace project. and. Uh, I need you to to you know uh, be aware of that. Anyway, uh, I got an audition. I uh, I had to audition, but uh, take my audition in New York because I was doing a Broadway show, and uh, and I submitted my uh, my tape and I I got in. But before that, I uh, apparently they were talking. Uh, Darren, Chris, and uh, the, the the writer Tom Rob Smith were talking about. Who's going to play the, the 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 character Modesto? And they both saw me in Miss Saigon in London, and they said, "I think he's going to be right for this." And so they tried to to uh, talk to the uh, producers and directors about me, and uh, I got in. I got in. <laughs> uh, so, you know, Modesto Cunanan is somebody that a lot of people didn't really know anything about prior to this episode. Um, how did you go about researching about a guy that there's not that much written about? You, oh my God, you are so right about that. When, when even when I was auditioning, I had to research who this guy was and uh, there was nothing about him. Didn't know if he's still alive. Uh, not much to go about, but, uh, but the thing was that the the size that I got was so good that I understood who this this character is, and uh, so I went with that. I, I just trusted the material. Um, but when uh, when I got it, um, but my first day when I arrived, I flew from New York to to L.A. and I, I met with Matt Bomer, the director of Episode Eight. He, we had a conversation which was so nice before we started shooting, and he lent me his copy of Maureen Orth's book, Vulgar Favors, which helped me so much. And I was able to talk to Maureen as well on set and Tom Rob Smith, and uh, th that helped so much, you know, understanding who this this character is. He's, he's, man, he's on steroids. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there almost seems to be a, a certain, um, maybe it's facetious to say this, but kind of like a Willie Loman quality of a guy who not only wants to be more than what he is, but also wants his son uh, to be more than what he is. Uh, how do you even go about getting into the mind of a guy yeah. with that kind of, <laughs> you know, strange narcissism, but also kind of obsession right i think i you just try to be as close to it as possible i grew up in in the philippines the third world country philippines uh and i've met so many people and and i know what it's like to to want something i've been watching a lot of hollywood movies and I've always thought, my God, that that's that's a wonderful place to be in. Uh, I've met, I have neighbors who were uh, overseas workers who would go out to another country and come back and have this bravado of being somebody. But and so they they you know they 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 try to act like that with that they they've been that they're rich and they try to spend as much as they can to to show you know for show and and uh 
before you know it, they have to leave again to, to make some more money. Um, one thing, what you don't have and wanting to be somebody is, is something I think is so universal that we can understand and we can, we can acknowledge. And I just went with that. And it helps as well that I, I was born and raised in the Philippines from a poor family. And and much of your scenes, particularly in the first half of that episode, uh, are you know very intense, particularly with the young actor who plays you know Andrew as a child. Um, how do you how did you and and Matt Bomer, your director, how did you guys work out how to do those scenes, particularly you know given some of the really dark nature of that character in those moments? It was hard, uh, but. Thank God for Matt. Um, I, I think, first of all, I think we have <laughs> dark sides in us that, and, and it's the difference is if we let it out or, or you know, how we handle it. And I think being on set, you, you, I just had to trust my director to, to bear myself, to basically, you know, uh, uh, to undress in front of everyone and just, you, you know, do it. And, um, and it, it also helps that uh, the actors are amazing people, uh, especially that the Edward, the kid who played the, my son, uh, he was so professional and um, it, that, that scene was so hard to do. And um, Matt had to talk to me and, and calm me down and say, you know, we're not gonna start this until you're, you're ready, you know, because, and he keeps uh, reminding me, if you don't succeed, I don't succeed. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this right, and we're gonna do this with, 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 uh, with a lot of taste. And of course, and, and you know, really the big climax of this episode is the confrontation uh, when, when the adult Andrew, played by Darren Chris, comes to see you, um, walk us through that scene and that working relationship with Darren um, and how that developed in that scene. You know, before that scene, we didn't really work together. We, uh, we saw each other on set and uh, we, we, we would talk, but he's always busy doing his scenes and I would be busy doing my scenes. Uh, I think, also credit to to uh, to Matt Bomer as well, and also to Darren Chris. With it's, they're such such giving uh, people, actor and Matt Bomer is such a he's an actor, so he understands you know where I'm coming from, um, and and the writing, you know, it, it's just trusting the material and um, and trusting. The director, who is the main, in my opinion, the main storyteller, he knows he want he knows where it should start and what it should look like from beginning to end, and I just had to trust him. And um, that scene in the Philippines, I that that was my favorite because it, it was just an amazing um, writing from from Tom Rob Smith and uh, Matt told me, he said, I want to do this, like, uh, if, if I'm going to give you a, a visual, it's like Apocalypse Now, the, the, the final scene of, in that movie. I went, oh, God, yes. If that makes sense. No, no, it does. I, was, was that a scene that, that took a great deal of time to shoot? You know, um, I was so grateful that because uh, Matt is uh, is also a theater actor, so is Darren Chris. That when we blocked, when we rehearsed it, we actually blocked it and said, "Just go with it." And we, it was like a play. We were doing a play, and and uh, at the end of it, yeah, sorry, my phone. And at the end of it, that was my wife. <laughs> She's a big part of my success, so that's okay. Uh, but when we uh, when we blocked it, he went, "All right, that's great. That's that's good." Uh, it, we we went with that. It was so organic, and uh, 
you know, Darren, he's, he's, I've been, a, you know, a fan of his for a long time now. And to be, to be in the same scene with him was just amazing. Well, you, you have a story in terms of your success as an actor. Uh, I suppose that the thing that you've uh, most been associated with, to, with up to this point is Miss Saigon. Um, and you were in the original cast. Uh, and now, and then played the engineer in London and on Broadway. Uh, has the theater always been really your home? Oh yes, yes. I uh, I first discovered theater when when I was uh, an engineering student. That's ironic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then um, um, when I, I got Miss Saigon in 1989 to to join the uh, the, the 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 original production of it with Jonathan Price and Leia Salonga. And that was my first time to actually do eight shows a week. And I went, oh my God, this is amazing. You know, I, because when I was, when I discovered acting, when I was nine years old, I said, oh, people do that for a living. I wish I could be on, on stage, you know, 24 hours a day or doing acting 24 hours a day and doing eight shows a week was closest to it. And and now that you, I mean, how has has the response to to your performance in Versace has that changed? Uh, opportunities are there new opportunities for you that you haven't had before? Um, uh, I think there is. Uh, um, according to my agents, uh, there are <laughs> there are uh, phone calls happening, <laughs> and. Uh, it's it's funny when when I audition now, uh, casting people will talk to me for half an hour before I do my audition and say, "Oh my God, that uh, that episode!" You know, they, uh, we would talk about it, and, they, and sometimes it would just take me out of the of <laughs> what I'm doing. But it's it's uh, the reaction's been amazing. Um, I'm very grateful because. You know, to tell the truth, when when I first read the, uh, the 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 script, I went. I first reaction was, is, wow, this is written for an Asian actor. Um, that that was that was just amazing. Um, I, I'm very grateful for to Mr. Ryan Murphy. And 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 on speaking of Ryan Murphy, I, I, did you have any conversations with him in the midst of shooting this? No, unfortunately, he was not there. He was, uh, he started, uh, I think, production uh, shooting for uh, Pose already. So he wasn't there. But I met him. The first time I met him was when he, he came to see Miss Saigon. That was, that was, that was great. And he was very, uh, very complimentary. So uh, thinking about Modesto, it when you, it's often said that actors don't like to judge their characters. So when you play a character that, that dark, how do you see him? How did, how did you see Modesto through this process? Uh, I saw him as a parent. I, I think it, it, it's very important to not, because the, the right, like I said, the writing was so good that it's, it's a very complex character that, I had to take it from a loving parent. Everything he did was for love, for his child, for uh, doing the best he can to succeed for his family and for himself. Albeit, you know, the way he did it was just, you know, not, not, not what you would like. Um, so everything, it, it, and I think for me to be able to, to, to do it, I had to like him. Um, they have, you know, four children. I'm sure there was love there between him and the wife uh, and, and, and with his kids. And I think the goal, it had to be, my, my goal has always, always had to be, uh, uh, clear to me and and to keep in mind that he's a one one track minded person 
he knows what he wants and he he thinks he knows how to get it um it, it's interesting because in in researching the character myself uh there's still an era of mystery of mystery about him even after uh the events of kunanan and that's shown in the last episode when you it's shown of you talking to andrew and then also going on tv and saying that that you know the father saying he owns the rights to <laughs> andrew's life um was that was that scene in the last episode was that always there was that always the original plan to have you in the last episode as well i you know, I don't know. I just found out I, I shot the, the, the eighth episode and I thought that was it for me. And then I, I got a phone call saying, you're going to shoot the last episode. Uh, so I'm not sure, but, um, but I'm just <laughs> I'm glad they, they did. Uh, I think it was uh, important as well that he was there. I think the, to, to keep, to keep the, uh, the narrative going, especially how they wanted to end it. I think uh, Modesto had to be in the picture. I'm curious if it's if it's easier for you as an actor to to play a role in which there isn't that much known about, not that much written about him. Everything's kind of supposition. People don't even know if he's alive or dead. Uh, he'd be he'd be in his nineties now. Um, do you prefer being able to put your own imagination into a character or do you actually like more concrete details to work off of? I think the first one, I think uh, to, to put my own uh, uh, idea and my, my own understanding of the character as opposed to um, a very concrete one, because there would be, there's going to be too much judgment on my part and, and the viewer's part. Uh, but, but at the same time, I need to be true to the, the spirit of, of this, to, of this character, you know, what, uh, it, it can't go too much, you know, you can't push it too much. It, it has to be there, but, but it, it was not hard because when I read about him and and when I was talking to Maureen Orth about how when he came back after the death of Andrew, that he was interviewed by Larry King and that in one of the, the things that he said was, yeah, he, he has the rights for the, to the movie and to the movie that, and, and that <laughs> the first thing he said was one of the things he said was, I want John, John Kennedy to play my son. He, he he was delusional, you know. Uh, so it was easy when when I found that out. It's like, okay, this guy is this. This guy is. I can play with this. They, that that's fun. You know what I mean. So after this this big success, what's what's next? What do you what do you got coming up? You're going to do more theater. Are you hoping to do more TV film? What's what's the what's what's in John John Briones' future? I want to do both. I want to be able to do a lot of TV to be able to finance my theater. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think it's uh, it served me well the balance of doing theater and doing screen acting. Um, it's it's they're different storytelling, but at the same time, it makes you be more uh, sensitive to what you're playing and to be sensitive to the audience as well. You can't be, uh, uh, you, you're, you're, you tend to be more nuanced, I believe, being a, a theater actor and a, a screen actor. Well, John, John, congratulations on, on all of the success with this project and uh, we can't wait to see uh, what your next project is. And, and thanks so much for talking to me. Thank you, Tony.